hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My channel, my name is Nick Carr if you are new and today I'm going to be talking about 10 things to know before going to George Mason University. So if you didn't know by now, I go to George Mason University and today I just wanted to talk about 10 different topics to help you know the school better. But if you are not looking at George Mason University or you aren't even in the age of going to college yet, these are things that you should look for in potential schools that you want to go to. Also, this is crazy that this is probably the last video that I'm going to post before the new year. 2020 is right around the corner. It's insane. The decade is almost over. The year is almost over. So I just wanted to quickly thank you guys for such an amazing year. This past year has really been awesome for YouTube. I've really learned to love and grow on YouTube. I feel like I have learned so much and have improved my content so much and have really just grown as a person and a creator and that wouldn't have been possible without you guys. So thank you so much for all of your support, your amazing comments. You guys are the best. So with all that being said, let's talk about the 10 things you need to know before going to George Mason University. I probably should have worn the sweatshirt, but I didn't, so um, sorry. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is Greek life. Yes, Mason has Greek life, but it is nowhere near as huge as like a lot of southern schools that my friends go to. That's not the case for Mason. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many sororities and fraternities there are, but there is a good amount and you see them a lot on campus. But unlike a lot of other schools, Mason does not have a Greek row where it's like the row of houses that all of the um, Greek life people live in. Personally, I'm not in Greek life. I have nothing against it, but I have a lot of friends who are in Greek life and a majority of them love it. And you meet a lot of people and they do a lot of activities and fundraising and they're just all very active on campus. So if you are looking to get that sort of traditional college sorority feel, I feel like Mason is not the place, but we have it if you're interested in it. And I don't know a whole lot about Greek life, but talking about Greek life, I guess I can talk about parties. Basically, if you are a guy and you are not in Greek life, it is almost impossible to get into any parties. Mason doesn't really have that big of a party scene as it is, but I feel like that's the case for most schools. The next thing I will be talking about is food. I know that was one of the most important aspects to me being an on-campus student. I'll talk about this later, but Mason has a lot of off-campus students. But if you're living on campus, you will be eating the school's food every day because you have no other option. And if you live on campus and you have a dorm that does not have a kitchen, you are forced to get a meal plan. So you are pretty much going to have to get a meal plan as long as you live on campus because there are not that many dorms that have kitchens. So the food is, um, it's not that bad. I feel like it has gotten gradually better over the three years that I have been at Mason. Don't expect a Michelin star meal from a Mason dining hall. You can expect to see your pizza and your french fries and some sandwiches and um, breakfast food in the morning. I will say that it is pretty much on par with other schools, but on Mason's campus, there are three dining halls. We have Southside, Ike's and the Globe and what am I trying to say? Ike's is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week and Southside is open from like breakfast time to 2 a.m. And the Globe is probably the least popular dining hall because it is so far away from my dorm. It is like three quarters of a mile walk. The dining halls all serve basically the same food and you can expect the same thing from each dining hall. So basically the dining hall you go to primarily just depends on where you live unless you wanna get food at like four in the morning for some reason and you go to Ike's. But when you get a meal plan, you have the option to get something called bonus bucks, which are basically just credit of money that you can spend on all of the places besides the dining halls on the Mason campus. And the best thing about the food at Mason is that there are so many options. There's a ton of places to eat. There's 
Dunkin', Starbucks, Chipotle, Panera, um, there's a sushi place, there's Blaze Pizza, there's Garbanzo, there um, is an Indian restaurant, there's like a barbecue place, there is a ton of places. Oh, there's also Einstein Bagels. Einstein Bagels is one of my favorite places to eat on campus. I don't know if I've mentioned that in the video, but I love bagels and Einstein Bagels. I go there all the time and spend a lot of my bonus bucks on bagels. So next, I'm going to be talking about the campus size. So don't hold me accountable for this, but I I think that Mason is the biggest public school in Virginia. I may be wrong, don't, but I'm pretty sure that Mason is the biggest public school in Virginia and there is over 30,000 people. I feel like somewhere I saw that it was like 40,000. I'm sure you have probably heard a lot of people call Mason a commuter school. Since Mason is in a very central area of Virginia. We are very close to Maryland and a bunch of other parts of Virginia. A lot of people commute. And when I say a lot of people, I mean two thirds of all of the students that go to Mason. So if 30,000 people go to Mason, 10,000 people live on campus. And even though there are 30,000 plus students that go to Mason, I do recognize a lot of familiar faces all the time and I see people basically every day that I have seen through other days. So although 30,000 plus people may seem intimidating in terms of just like hearing the numbers, it's really not that bad. And even if you are a student that commutes, it is not that bad and it doesn't feel overwhelming. I've never felt overwhelming, but during the week it is booming and everyone is walking around. I like the feeling of when everyone is there and it's busy and everyone's going to class. It just feels very productive and like a very energetic environment, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So next I'm going to be talking about housing. There is housing at Mason. If you are a freshman or a sophomore, you are lucky and will basically be guaranteed housing. But for me as a junior, it was very hard to find housing. Because there are so many people there, of course it kind of makes sense that they cater towards the underclassmen. That can be very annoying because George Mason is in Fairfax, which is one of the most expensive places to live. Because we are so close to DC, it is very, very expensive to rent out a place. And again, that is why so many people commute because I know people that go to other schools in places that aren't so like suburban or near a major city. They pay a fraction of what people would pay to live off campus at Mason. So if you are thinking of living off campus at one time or another, you basically just have to room with a lot of people. So if you are an upperclassman watching this or you are going to be an upperclassman, my advice to you is to join an LLC. Mason offers a lot of upperclassman LLCs which are living learning communities. I've been in an LLC before and that was basically like the only way that I feel like I could have gotten housing this year because like I said, housing is so tight. So if you're an upperclassman, just really apply to an LLC if you want to have a better chance of getting on campus housing. So next I'm going to be talking about demographics. I'm sure if you have toured Mason, you have heard them talk about their demographics and the diversity that is at Mason. They very much like to share their diversity because Mason is an extremely diverse school, which is great. And there are people from all around the country, the globe. Literally, I've had people from California, China, Japan, literally everywhere you can think of there is most likely a student that goes to Mason. So if you are looking for a school with a lot of diversity, Mason is definitely one for you. We have a lot of organizations centered around diversity and Mason is very much focusing on diversity and cares a lot about diversity and I feel like that is one of the main values which I think is awesome. Mason is just a place where I feel like everyone feels welcome at Mason which is awesome and is what I love about it so much and Mason really wants the students to feel welcome so All right, so next I'm gonna be talking about the scheduling. Not the process of making your schedule in terms of classes because that's another story. I don't wanna get into that. I'm gonna be talking about the scheduling in terms of breaks, like fall break, winter break, all that stuff. So the first break you will have is fall break. It's not really a break. It is just you either get a Friday off or a Monday off. 
you get one day off, so it's like a three or four day weekend. Most students at Mason don't have Friday classes, so it's just like another day. But the best break for any college student is winter break. And at Mason, the winter breaks, I feel like are longer than other schools. My friends usually have like four weeks, three to four weeks. But my breaks at Mason, my winter breaks are around like five weeks to sometimes even longer than that. It's a very long break, which is great because you will end finals week stressed and not in the best mindset. The five weeks that you have off for break is a great time to reset, to relax, and it's just the holiday season and it's great. And I'm currently on my winter break and I'm living my best life getting all the sleep in the world. It was Christmas, I had my birthday, I get to see all my friends. It's just a great time. And spring break is basically like fall break. You just have a day or two off. It's not that huge of a break. But then after that you have summer break. So those are the schedules. Of course you will have some holidays off which will just be like another long weekend or just a day off in the middle of the week. So yeah. Next, I'm going to be talking about the safety at Mason. So a lot of schools that you probably have toured or will tour have something called a blue light system where it's just like poles with a blue light and it is just like a phone where you can go there for any emergencies to get help. Mason doesn't have a blue light system. They say that we haven't even been eligible for a blue light system because there is such little crime on the campus. So Mason is a very safe campus. I have been walking around very late at night and have felt safe. Um, there are people who walk around campus at like 3 in the morning. So I would personally say that Mason is a very safe place. None of my friends have had any problems. I don't know anyone to have had any problems. And of course, like many schools, there is a sort of police force on campus. So if you are in a situation where you don't feel safe walking somewhere, you can call the non-emergency number and they can kind of give you a ride to where you need to go since you don't feel safe walking. So they're always there. There's a non-emergency number and an emergency number and when you have your orientation they will make sure that you have all those numbers saved on your phone so I would say that Mason is an extremely safe place we're in the suburbs where nothing really happens it's a very safe place so I would say that there's nothing to worry about in terms of that so next I'm going to be talking about living in Fairfax so a lot of colleges are in sort of college towns where like the college is sort of in the middle of nowhere, but the college sort of makes the town, if that makes sense, or the college is in a city and it's like kind of just a really cool vibe. Um, Mason is not like that. Mason is right in the middle of the Northern Virginia suburbs. So there is not a whole ton to do. And if you go to Mason, basically, if you wanna go out and do something, you have to take the Metro into DC because there is basically nothing to do in Fairfax besides going to the mall or like going to a restaurant. I don't know, like a lot of people that I see in other schools go to like clubs or bars or just they're in the city so they have a lot of things to do. I feel like Mason is not like that. But also the travel to DC is not far and it is very inexpensive because the shuttle from Mason to the Metro is free with your ID. And since Mason is in a very central place, you can kind of get to all sorts of places in Virginia, DC, Maryland. You can go to a lot of places that are in like a half an hour radius. So there aren't a lot of things to do in Fairfax, but there are a lot of things to do outside of Fairfax. And lastly, I'm going to be talking about study abroad. And Mason has a ton of study abroad. I think since it is such a big school, that is why we have such an awesome study abroad program. Mason really wants you to study abroad. We even have an entire Mason campus in Korea that teaches a lot of things and you can study there for a semester or multiple semesters, multiple years. Um, you can go to so many different countries and we have a huge study abroad office that lists everything and every place that you can go. I personally have not studied abroad. I know people that have studied abroad and they love it. People will come into your class sometime from the semester and they are from the study abroad office 
and they will talk to you about study abroad and give you the list of all the places you can go and you can narrow it down by your major. Basically every major has a study abroad program in a different country and if you didn't know what study abroad is, study abroad is kind of in the name, you get to study abroad, you get to study in a different country. Most of the time it is for a semester, so either the fall or spring semester, but sometimes they have shorter trips that are in the summer, during winter break, fall break. I'm not really sure, but basically there you go all throughout the year in a ton of different countries. I have seen some for Iceland, Italy, Australia, Japan, Korea, basically every country you can study abroad in and they have programs relating to your major. So I think that's really cool. So if you're interested in travel, I would recommend doing it because Mason makes it very affordable and it basically, the cost is no different compared to your normal in-state salary. And if you are out of state, it will often be even cheaper. So I know a lot of out of state students study abroad because it is a lot cheaper than studying out of state in Mason in Virginia. Why? I don't know why I said it like that, but I, I think it makes sense. <laughs> All right, guys, those were 10 things. The big one zero, or is it one zero zero? I don't know if this camera's flipped. It's 10. Those were the 10 things that you need to know before going to Mason. I hope these things helped you learn a little bit about Mason. Um, if you're interested in it, if you're not interested in it, these are 10 things that you should probably research about the schools that you want to go to and are things that you should look into for your school. I have loved my time at Mason. Of course, there are things that I don't like about Mason, but there are a lot of things that I very much like about Mason, and I think it's a great school, and I would highly consider touring it if you haven't and looking into it if you haven't. So if you're new to my channel and you haven't already, I would really, really, really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel give this video a big thumbs up and follow all the social media links in the description below my name is Nick Carr I will see you in another video thank you guys for watching I think this video is gonna be really long I'm sorry goodbye I need to go to bed it's very late I need to stop talking bye